Hello guys, you join me as we finish off December with another nice sherry review. So, let's kick straight up into things, shall we? 1994 vintage Glen Farkless. Now, this is, or I should say it was because I don't think it's available anymore, this was an exclusive bottling for The Whiskey Shop. Uh, the Whiskey Shop is a little company based in the UK, uh, who now have a shop in Paris as well. Uh, they've been going since 92 and they've got a pretty good relationship with a lot of big companies. And this was the 20 year old bottling that they got from them. So a bottle 2014, I think it, only, it came out last year? Or maybe by the start of this year, but I'm pretty sure it was last year. And I've mentioned in previous videos that I'm, I wasn't much of a Glen Farkless fan. Which shocks a lot of people, because I like sherried whiskey. I'm a big Glendronic fan, I'm somewhat of an old school Macallan 12 era fan. Um, you know, I like sherry barman, I like barman sherry casks, I like all sorts of things. Um, but Glen Farkless, for some reason, never seemed to tick much of my boxes. Don't know why, it just did. I think it was just a little bit too subtle for me. There was no particularly overwhelming flavour that stood out. The 10 I thought was a little bit too citric. The 15, even though it, you know, it wins numerous awards and is coveted by many people, just didn't do much for me. And things like the 21 and the 25, again, I thought were too subtle. Um, when you start getting into the price tags of 21s and 25s, I want something that's like a Rolls Royce. I want a big, over-the-top style that is luxurious and rich and coats my mouth for the next four days. But, as a side point, you've got to realise that Glen Farkless probably don't want to go for that style. They have whiskies in that category. They got like you know the family cast uh, single cast bottlings and all that kind of stuff, which probably do do that. Um, but, you know, overall they might not want to be like Gundrunk. They might not want to be like McAllen. They've got their own unique style, and that's what's beautiful about each individual distillery. Now, I'm sure all of you know a little bit about Van Farkas. They were established in 1836. They're still one of the only family run or run distilleries throughout all of Scotland. I think there's only around sort of four or five now, in terms of sort of legendary names. Uh, and this is, as I said at the start, and it was an exclusive for the whiskey shop. If we examine the colour, we can see that we definitely can agree that it's not a first fill sherry cask. And it's probably not a second fill either. It's probably like a third fill style sherry cask. So at this point, you're not going to get all those really intense, over-the-top tannic notes that you would from a sherry cask. It's not going to smell like Christmas cake. It's not going to smell like sultanas and raisins. It's going to be a much more laid-back style. In fact, it's quite similar in colour to the Glen Farkless 10-year-old. But it's double the age, which is amazing. This is also bottled at 43% ABV. Um, I've no idea about chill filtration, and I'm not sure of colour either. Um, I can't. I, I assume they wouldn't need to add any additional colouring to that, just because of the way it is. And I will assume it's also chill filtered, just because... Because. So, quite a light colour. Nice kind of, you know third fill style cask. It's going for the nose. Mm. It's like the video two weeks ago, or a couple of weeks ago now, it's very similar to what I expect from Balvenie style whiskies. It's very honeyed. It's kind of like, um, sort of like ice cream wafer and wafer biscuits and all that kind of thing. Jim Murray gave this whiskey quite an intense review. I think he gave it uh, like 90, 94 or 95 and a half or something like that. Um, I'm not a follower of Jim Murray. Um, I always think it's quite, it's more comical now, his whiskey of the year than anything else. But he, uh, you know, he has a lot of pulling power. A lot of people literally read his book like an actual Bible. And I've seen people buy whiskies purely based on his reviews and nothing else, like not actually trying it for themselves. Um, you know, if you're doing that for investment purposes, then yeah, you know, that could be quite uh, very lucrative, oddly enough. Um, if you're doing it based on taste, then, you know, I would say try it yourself first. But yeah, he gave this whiskey quite an intense review, in a good way. Yeah, honey, wafer biscuits. A little bit of kind of white pepper. It's got a nice bit of spice on the nose. Kind of like um, summer flowers too, reminds me of sort of lilies and buttercups and all that kind of stuff. A very subtle approach, as we would expect from the, uh, the guys and girls at Glen Farkless. 
Now, my lips are extremely dry and they're kind of cracked. So even at 43%, this might, uh, I might pull some funny faces. So I do apologize, but we'll have a taste. Still as good as I remember it. Now you might be asking yourself, he's not a Glenn Farkas fan. Why did you buy a 20 year old? Well, it's actually a birthday present from the guys and girls who I work with. And when this was launched at the whiskey shop, I was in there and someone bought it and opened it. And I never wanted to turn down a glass of whiskey. And I tried it and I was, I was ready to be, oh, just to go, oh, it's all right. And I remember the smell and thinking, it smells like Glen Farkas. And I remember the taste, the texture, the, the fluidity of this spirit and how it clung to my teeth. And the only thing I will ever agree with with Jim Murray is that this is in some way an expression of how good modern sherry whiskey can be. It doesn't have to be first and second fill. You don't need these horrendously dark colours. You know, some people really dig it, but you shouldn't buy a whiskey based on colour. Just because it's dark, it doesn't mean it tastes good. Uh, Lock Dew being the main example. I think it tastes like soy sauce. Or Kadub, which I think is the replacement for that. You know, just because it's really dark, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be something that ticks all your boxes. This isn't very dark, it's more of a kind of lovely gold and orange colour. But my god, it's amazing. I think when this was available, when it was out, it was about £84-ish. And even though I said thank you when they gave it to me, thank you very much guys for buying me that. It's an awesome bottle. It is so buttery. I feel quite naughty for drinking it, which is something that only really happens when I drink like really intense bourbon or really old bourbon. It just coats every single side of your mouth. So in a sense, when I said I didn't like Glen Farkas because they didn't do that style, this is just something that kind of, through some sort of way of coincidence and cast selection, has ended up doing that. The finish too, not particularly long, not particularly intense, but just full of all these rich but soft flavours. Things like lavender and a little bit of lily and all that kind of stuff. Just these little floral notes come darting across your palate <clears throat> and it allows whatever cask this was in, and I'm assuming it was probably just like, you know, like a, a third fill Oloroso cask, just allows the softer nature of those sherry notes to pull through. So there is a little bit of raisin, there is a little bit of sultana, which is what you would expect, but there's a drying, soft spiciness and I'm kind of licking all sides of my mouth because you keep trying to find little pools of it that have gathered around and you just get that really big buttery hit again. It is phenomenal. And unfortunately, I don't, as I said, there's none left, so I kind of, that's all I have left. So I have to kind of nurse that for however long I can. One more go, so I see what happens. It is like a little bit of everything. There's dried fruit, there's fresh fruit, there's butter, there's a little bit of salt. There's a slight vanilla caramel note, which I'm really loving, which is kind of brought on by the added kind of butteriness of the texture. And in the end, it's a showcase of how good sort of third fill casks can actually be. Get a little bit of spice, a little bit of pepper, kind of gets thrown in there, a little bit of drying oak. But the overall dominant flavour is that thick, rich, buttery spirit 
with just little flecks of flavour kind of bouncing throughout of it. This whisky as a whole changed my opinion on Glenfarlax massively. And I've gone back and I've retried the 10, I've retried the 15, I've retried the 105, and I do have a greater appreciation for those whiskies now. Because of this one bottle, um, which I think says a lot about whisky, because you, know, you can sit there and go, I don't like this, I don't like that, it doesn't do anything. But then you know they bring out one limited edition, and yes, it is a limited edition, but it changed my opinion on an, an entire brand's range, which is something that doesn't happen a lot with anything outside of whiskey or inside of whiskey. And as a result of that, I now have a much greater appreciation for this distillery and its beautiful history and what it does, and hopefully they'll be bottling more things like this. I don't care that it's not the same colour as this table. It tastes awesome. And at the end of the day, it is always about taste. Doesn't matter if it's got colouring in it, doesn't matter if it's got chill filtration on top of it. Although chill filtration these days is somewhat of an unwanted necessity. You don't really need it anymore. But it tastes awesome. And that is the final ticking box really, isn't it? If it tastes great, it doesn't really matter. So there we go, folks. Glen Farkas 1994. And I'm going to give that a good solid 8.5 out of 10. Wonderful whiskey, wonderful distillery, wonderful history, and quite the changer of opinions on this side of the camera anyway. Really, really blown away by it. Still am now, even though it's been open for nearly like a year and a half. So yeah, 8.5 out of 10, Farkas 94. Hope you all have a wonderful day, and thank you very much. Goodbye.